Alright, what's going on everyone? It's Fox Hooster here. I hope you're all having a great life, enjoying life to the fullest. Um, I woke up this morning and I just realized that I haven't made a tutorial for you guys in a very, very long time. So I thought a fun one for me to do was make a series on making scenery out of supports. Now, this is a pretty long process. There's a lot of different little components that you have to think about. So I decided that it would better be off broken into little tutorials. And I thought I'd start off with the simplest one, which is just making queue railings. Technically, I made a tutorial on this a really long time ago, but it was really bad, really undetailed, and I could make railings much better with much better techniques now than I did back then. So I decided to rebuild it here. I hope it's helpful. I hope you learned something out of it. Also, as I said, I haven't recorded one of these in a really long time, so if my narrating isn't the best, I'm sorry. Just try to bear with me here. The first thing you're going to do to start to make your custom queue is hit new coaster up here. Just name it anything you want. I'm just going to call it scenery for now. And you have to go into the coaster properties and train change the train count to zero. You have to think of this as a dummy coaster. So we're basically using it so we can still see the, the coaster that we're using for our custom station. We can still see it frozen here so we can have a point of reference. But we want to be able to build this at the same time. So we have to have a dummy coaster just for our supports. So make the train count zero. And then normally I go into style and I change this to new so the railings look nice. If you want to have them old and beaten up, you can change it to worn or rusted. But for this purpose, I'm going to use it as new. And it doesn't matter what the style is. It can be anything. All right. So now that that's done, we're going to go into a side view any side view of your choice. It can be front, back, left, right. Any of those, I'm going to choose front. And then we're just going to go somewhere over here that's unobstructed by other things. And before you place down any supports, make sure that you have this box up here that says snap checked. What this is going to do is basically assign all the nodes to certain lines on the grid. So everything will be nice and lined up for us and we don't have to really line it up ourselves. It will just do it for us. To customize your snap, hit file and then preferences and in here you'll see that it has a box for snap distance i currently have mine at half a foot which works pretty well for me if you're using the metric system um just you have to find your own or you can just find something that works for you you can really have it any way you want just find something like i said that works for you and now we're going to start putting our supports down so if we go into the support tab you click add free node Find a crossover on the grid and just place a node down and then place another node on top of it. Now I would, I put mine about four feet apart. This is four feet apart. For me, each box is two, two feet. If you're using the metric system, I don't know, maybe make it about a meter tall. However you want to have it, just um, choose your own, customize it. And once we have those down, we're going to go into the support panel up here. And you have to customize this how you want it to be. Now we don't have to worry about any of the stuff down here. We're just worrying about the beam type, the diameter, and the color. Now, if you're using a steel beam, like most of you probably are, you're going to go in here and select custom pipe. And for the diameter, I would put it around 0.2 feet, like the way I have it. Again, if you're using the metric system, you're going to have to convert it. And if you're using a box beam, I would probably make it around 0.1 by 0.1 on each side, but we're not using a box beam right now, so um, this is the way I'm going to have it. For the custom color, um, make sure that you have custom color selected, and then go in here, choose a color that you want. If you just want the basic silver, move the little box down here under the blue, but where it's starting to turn white, and you're going to bring down the darkness just a little bit, And that's about the closest you're going to get to this silver color that you want. All right, so hit OK. And every time when you're using the support editor, make sure that after you change the settings, you just click on a box down here that is empty and has no properties in it, or else it will not save your settings. I don't know why they set it up that way, but it is the way it's set up. And if you lose your settings every time, it's going to get very, very frustrating. So just make sure that you do that. It's very important. After we clicked into another box, we can hit close on here. And we're going to click add beam. And we're going to click on one of our nodes and just drag it up to the other one and then drop it. And it will make a beam for us just like so. After that, you're going to click add beam node. 
and going to put one right in the center here. You can move it higher or lower, however you want it. This is basically going to be the other cross beam that's parallel to the one on top. If, if you don't want one of these, you can just skip this step. But I definitely want one. I normally put mine a little above halfway. So I'm going to put it just like that. And now we're going to select it and click this box up here that says define copy. This is basically going to copy and paste it so we can just put it down a million times without having to build it every time because that would get very annoying. After that, this is also very important. You're going to click add free node and just place a free node off to the side here. It doesn't really make any sense right now, but what this is going to do is basically every time you place one of these down, you're going to click this first and it's going to make sure that it puts every single one of your supports at the same height, which is at the height of this node, whatever the height may be. This is going to help you a lot because if you don't do this, it's going to put everything all over random heights all over the grid and you're going to have to adjust it yourself. It's going to waste a lot of time and be very, very frustrating. So please remember this step. With that out of the way, we can go into our top view, locate our two nodes, select them both, drag them over to a place that is near our building site, and now we're going to start building. So like I said, before you place anything down, make sure that you have your free node selected so everything will be on the same height. And now we're just going to go to where the stairs end here and we're going to hit this button that says click paste on the bottom. And when we click somewhere on the grid, you'll see that it brings up our support and it snaps it to the grid just like so. And we're just gonna keep on doing that in our lines. We can build switchbacks, you can build just a long extended path. You can have it whichever way you want. This is the part where you get to customize. It's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do it the way I want to. Um, you can do it the way I show or you can do it your own. You get to experiment. That's the best part about this game. And uh, yeah. Alright, just like that, we have our grid of supports done. If we go into perspective mode, they should be all neatly aligned up, just like so. And now all we have to do is hit add beam again, and we're going to connect all of these in the way that would make sense, just by clicking and dragging from one node to the other. If they're in a straight line, you can just hop over all of them, just like that. It will save you a lot of time. If you want to do them one by one, that's perfectly fine too. All right, just like that, we can see the wireframe looks all good. We're going to go back to coaster and freeze it and see how it looks. And we'll see that we have a fairly nice looking, basic, but very functional queue here. And um, yeah, so as you keep on building, you'll notice that your designs get more and more complex. You can, you know, maybe stagger out the length of each switchback. Some can be longer than others. You can make circles, you can make shapes, you can space them out and put some plants in the middle. You can make wooden railings, box railings, pipes, whatever you want it to be. You can make tunnels, all of that great stuff. But um, for now we have this. And if we unfreeze it again, we can do the final step, which is selecting it all, all in one shot. And then if you are on a computer that has a page up and page down key, you can just hit page down to lower it to ground level. Or if you are on a laptop or computer that does not have those keys, you may just go into a side view here, like so, locate the objects, and then click and drag it straight down. Make sure that it's still in the same horizontal position that it was when you started. Go back into your perspective view, and your support should be just barely going under the ground, or the nodes can be just barely coming out of the top, but they should not float above like so. They should be kind of nested inward like that, but not too far inward. You know, you get the idea. And we're going to freeze it again. And now you'll see that we have this fully functioning queue here. It's a pretty small queue for an Intamin Hyper. And it's also kind of ugly, not going to lie. But as I said, it's simple. You can always change it up. Um, in the next tutorials in the future, I intend on showing you how to change it up, you can use different types of railings.
customize it, how to do different shapes, create an actual floor so you're not just on the grass so you can have some you know, concrete slab so it's more realistic, how to add um, lights and tunnels and cue awnings for shade and all this other stuff. If you have something that you want me to teach you how to do in the future, just leave me a comment and I'll, um, I'll get to you. And also one more thing, if you're ever feeling kind of lazy, you can just go into scenery here and hit choose. And if we go into the library, hit the park folder. Um, I think it's in the fence set. I rarely use this, so I wouldn't know. If we scroll down, we have all these types of fences, and you'll actually see that they have pre-made queue fences here, but um, you can't really customize them that well, and in my opinion, they don't look that good. They're also a lot more annoying to adjust and fit to each other, but if that's the way you want to do it, uh, you can. I always just like to do it the old school way before this was the only way that you could do it and it was the only way that you could really build any fences at all or anything and no limits to but um yeah I prefer this way uh, you can just keep that in mind if you ever want to use it but um yeah I think that's all I have for today if this was helpful let me know if it wasn't helpful also let me know I'll try my best to help you out in the comments so you can get what you're looking for I plan on making more of these this was just the first of the series. I hope you like them. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh, enjoy life. Peace out.